morning everyone uh, finally comes the day that I'm making my way to Peak District uh, I've been checking on the weather every day it's changing so uh, the funny sound what you can hear is poo, 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 is my backpack which is slightly overpacked only because I was not sure about the uh, weather uh, it's supposed to rain and I really don't gonna get wet and soaky <coughs> and also this is the first time that I'm going for a three days hike which means I'm gonna to sleep two nights under my tent and I'm also testing new tent so yes I slightly overpack myself on the top of everything when I was having my coffee and chilling and making myself ready for my journey I got a message that my train was cancelled from Havertz here to London so I'm a little rushed because I need to take earlier train to make sure that I catch my connection to Sheffield uh, anyway I, I do hope that it's not gonna be very cold or very rainy and uh, we'll see hopefully soon uh, from Sheffield Hi. <laughs> Hello, hello from Peak District. So, just arrived to uh, Hayfield. It's it's twelve o'clock, and I actually can't believe that I make it after all the can cancellation. The weather is not really the best one. It's 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 cloudy. It's it's rolling over, uh, partly sunshine, and it's falling rain uh, light showers showers is the word <laughs> uh, but I don't mind I'm happy that I make it here and if it's gonna rain it's gonna rain having a quick cigarette a little bit of coffee and I will make my way up I have like five meters of a little hike to the road that I was reefless. I always forget how how hard it is to uh, climb up or go up. Previously I planned to do like educational uh, vlog this time but because I was so lazy to write everything on the paper or learn it I'm gonna a little bit cheat so I decided to go through the snake path around the Kinder Reservoir and it says that opening of the snake path in 19, uh, sorry, 1897 was the first a series of success for big and not of uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I decided to go all the way around so I can see the kinder downfall. Oh, very big, I can't fit through this. Shall we meet some red gooses and mounting hair and bell heater? That's a flower. Okay, we going up, up and up. Maybe you asking where is my hat? I'm usually wearing hat. Where is my hat? I'm a hatter. So because I know that I'm going to very windy area, I was fully aware that if I put the hat, uh, it will be blow away, and I really need to protect my ears from this cold wind. So the scarf is absolutely perfect for this. Yay! <sighs> Thank you. 
when I when I when I previously talked about how the weather was changing from day to day, like two hours ago, it was heavy, heavy rain and black clouds, and now look at this. If it's clear, if it's clear, it's not beautiful how it's now. I mean, the shades from the clouds and how the wind is moving everything so quickly is so beautiful. I can't believe that it was so ugly like two hours ago. I hope this is gonna last. I believe this is gonna last. It must last. <laughs> For the educational part of the Kinder Downfall, which is just behind me, I will zoom it in a second. I uh, watched this documentary that apparently when it's very windy it looks like this uh, waterfall is falling backwards because of the wind so when I was watching this documentary I was not windy at all but here is the proof it actually uh, yeah it looks like it's falling backwards <laughs> I, I took a, a little break at Will, William Cloth. I haven't done and because I was just not ready for this part. I mean I know that it was just one sentence, but I was just not able to remember it. It was just this trespass built in, I don't remember the year, oh, something 1954, 74, I don't remember. Uh, so, yeah, I just don't remember that, that part, so I don't want to talk about things that are not true. I took a little break there and carry on up on the Kinder Downfall. Uh, the weather is stunning. Stunning, it's windy, but it's stunning.
I'm very tired. I'm very tired and I must admit that this trail is quite challenging because it's basically Kinder Scout is a plateau. It's like it's like a terrace. It's not very high but the uh, steep and the elevation is so hard with that over pack 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 what I did but I'm very glad that I did because it's five degrees five degrees Celsius and it's windy very like freezy wind so uh, outside the tent is very cold but yes so this is what I was going to talk and I wanted to do this thing outside but it was so windy that I couldn't even uh, record during my hike because you probably won't hear nothing so um, I decided to buy a proper uh, wild camping tent and because I was trying to do some research on YouTube I, I found few but most of them being just like how to set it up but not actually like testing in the conditions and like a review afterwards so because I was really impressed with the backpack, what I've got from the brand E E O O X, <laughs> and by the way, this is not paid advertisement. It's just a review for the people who started to with hiking, just to give advice. Uh, I hope nobody is listening around me. Anyway, so uh, I decided to have a look for the tents. What this brand is doing and. Uh, basically they doing this wild camping uh, it's like a coffin coffin Whoa. but uh, because this small is very quickly heated up with my own warm body which was basically my goal to find the tent which holds a little bit more warm because on my last trip I was really freezing in my tent few things that I really love about this tent is that fabric and the quality of the material and little details like a matching colors with everything that's pretty cool but I seems to feel issue with uh, getting out of the tent is so complicated I just need to unzip so many things and then I have to hook myself and then there is a this dry zip what's well, supposed to seal the uh, connection on the zip yes so how I supposed to seal it from inside if I'm inside does that make sense so and then what I love on my blue tent is that I can open and I can have the just the mesh so there are no mosquitoes but I can still enjoy the view which this could be done here and also they did like sides a little uh, like um patio or whatever is it hold on see so they're on the both sides and instead of making this chamber they could they could possibly do the extension on each side because oh sorry so what i mean is that you have that extra space where you can't really leave your rucksack because if it's gonna rain it's gonna be soaky wet and secondly like it if they little do the extension on the base of the tent you will get that extra space inside which which could be handy so yeah and then what I think is just, it's just like a falling on me on me anyway but other than that is quite cool and I was worried that I'm gonna be a little bit claustrophobic from this coffin but it's nice and cozy and I, I really nice settled here I have my blanket and I'm just very lazy to go to cook something because I'm very cold and tired so I decided to rather go have a nap and then maybe wake up in the middle of the night and try to do some night pic night pictures but I don't think so because it's so windy that my tripod is just shaking it's cool I like it and oh and one very good thing what they did is they put reflection tapes on the strings which are tightening the whole tent, the whole construction to protect it from the blowing away. 
So when I was walking around, I I just seen when I was walking towards my tent. So if another hiker is coming in the night, they just don't trip on my tent. The same me if I'm going outside, which is nice. So I don't have to put any more napkins on the strings. I'm super tired. Look at my eyes. <laughs> Hey, I woke up this morning to very misty and foggy environment, but never mind. Well, I checked the weather and it's supposed to rain and be heavy rain, so I'm glad that it's not a heavy rain. Uh, I'm making my way across the Kinders Count to Mamo Mamtor, and I do hope it's not gonna rain when I'm gonna set up my tent because. Uh, it's, I don't know what time is even. Uh, one second. It's half past nine. So I'm not the early riser this time because the sunrise was seven o'clock. So it was very dark and I was hungry. So I cooked myself some breakfast and it took me infinity to pack everything inside the tent because it was raining. But finally I make it. Ooh. And it's windy as you can hear probably. I'm sorry for that. I'll see you soon. Hello, I, I couldn't record much up because it's so windy, so only if what you probably will hear was just the wind. So it's just a quick update where I am. Uh, very soon I will arrive to Edale, uh, in Edale Valley, obviously. From where I'm gonna hike up to Mamtor. It's very windy and there's supposed to be heavy rain and I would like to set up my tent before it starts raining because it's, I don't know how, 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 how. So, yes, this is how the trips go so far. <sighs> See you soon. Currently hiking up Mamtor. It was very heavy rain when I was crossing Edale, so I'm a little bit soaky, and it's a quite steep uphill, so I'm sweaty, hot, <laughs> and you know what? I I realize it doesn't matter that it's raining. It's so peaceful when it's raining. So fresh.
everyone from Vitnas, Vitas, Vitnas, Vitas, Pass, Vintas, Pass. Doesn't matter. Oh my god, such a strong, heavy rain caught me on the way here. And uh, I'm soaky wet, everything was soaky wet. My sleeping bag is wet and uh, it was quite master to set up my tent because now, now not even one drop and all broke up and when I arrived it was absolutely such a strong heavy rain and uh, when I finally made it I mean I, I did it I did it and it's still inside a little bit wet and my my shoes my shoes are completely soaky wet and uh, this jumper and this little t-shirt tank is the only dry things on the top what I have and this gym pants and the leggings under because I have them in those vacuum bags which was such amazing idea and I'm very grateful that I made it that you know like you put the stuff inside and then you roll it and you press out all the air so it saves you space in a backpack and it kept my clothes uh, dry I had to just take off my my socks if I want to wear shoes now because they're my only last pair of socks are my heat warmer uh, heat keep heat he keep heat warmer <laughs> I don't know. so I use my uh, dirty clothes from yesterday hiking to wipe the tent from inside and now I check all the packs if everything is uh, tight and yeah, I should survive and have a rain. It's it's all right, but I'm worried about a sleeping bag because it soaked exactly on my head. So I don't know. I just hope that it will dry until I go sleep because I am already slightly cold and I have pretty much like two layers less. And I was considering to uh, walk down to Castleton and I accommodate there someone in a guest house but I said no no I'm I'm just gonna make it because in the morning supposed to be nice and actually the cavern is closed so I couldn't get in which is sad I don't know if the another cavern is gonna be closed as well but there I think I have to book online tickets and I don't know I think I'll just give it up all the thing with the caverns but the view here now how the rain stops and the sky is a little bit breaking down and the view is view is amazing <sighs> so yeah people I made it here and I had two challenging hikes behind me walking in the rain soaky wet and now sleeping in the wet sleeping bag I think is another lesson and there is a reason why I choose to come here, no matter what the weather was, because I, I wanted to uh, create a habit, not a habit, but I wanted, I, I would like to learn myself to sleep not just in a comfortable conditions like like was my first solo camping in the at the Dorset, because there was no wind, no rain, it was perfect, it was warm, but not always is uh, nature kind. And I think she, he, it, nature is right now kind to me that the rain stops and I could actually enjoy the view and don't regret that, oh my God, why I didn't go to the guest house. Because I think it's worth and no matter that I have a soaky wet shoes, tomorrow I'm going home, so fuck it. It's okay. You know, we, we're living just once and many million years ago when a people lives in the caverns and million okay <laughs> hundreds years ago when a people didn't have uh, houses and uh, electronic pins and um, ice machines and smartphones people lived in the nature and lived with nature and we don't choose what the weather is gonna be we don't choose if it's gonna rain or no we just need to adapt like sometimes the circumstances in the life we plan that this is the way how he want how we want to want to want to have a things 
but not always the things go this way and then we have option or we're just gonna fight with it or we just gonna quit and go in our way or we just adapt to it depending how it is related to our goal so in my case my goal was to come here and i spend the time and effort and i was working to save the money for the ticket here and practicing to see this view no matter what and i just adapt to it and i flow with it again I don't know what I'm talking about right now, but uh, I think you get the point that... I mean, I found the perfect spot. I think people came here. I've seen this spot on so many videos. Uh, actually, from the last one, that was the sunset. Guy has amazing sunset with the cloud. Well, I don't think that today I'm going to see sunset, but the sunrise, maybe. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I made it. I mean thinking obviously <laughs> when I when I was under the mom tour because I wanted to give up I was so wet but it's experience I guess it's like maybe giving up in a life of the things I don't know I don't know I don't know even where I found the power in my, because my arms starts to hurting me and my legs and my, my hip flexors. I start to really feel my legs and I was tired and wet and I wanted to give up, but now it is not even wind. It's not sunshine, but it's not raining. It's not raining, which is so good. Uh, I was able to do some pictures around and the only thing is that I still need to take off everything, like shoes, uh, socks, and wear barefooted my hiking boots because they are so wet. And I'm so much worried about my sleeping bag because it's it's getting even more more wet everywhere. It's it will like, be fine. I just decided that if I'm not, if I won't be able to sleep in the sleeping bag, I will just sit here. I'm just gonna sit here all night. And one more thing, to um, educational part of my vlog. So there was no, there were no many things that stays in my head. Uh, if we talk about like uh, why the mom tour is called mom tour, I remember that uh, basically it means that is a mother of all the little hills, which cause uh, the landslides. I think it calls limescale George, limescale George, this type of rock, and it's quite impressive because it's not high, but it's very like steep, and it looks like it basically just moved down, and it creates a little small hills. Uh, so mom mean mom Thor means a mom of all these small hills, and another thing that I remember from this area that I watched uh, another vlog from someone else was that apparently there was a couple passing I don't know I don't even remember the year uh, uh, there were a couple passing around and some bandits or I don't know they robbed them and killed them and buried them in one of the caves here and they found their bodies after 10 years and apparently this pass is haunted by them So it's a bit spooky and I believe in this kind of energy, so what I did, I brought my uh, Palo, Palo Santo wood and I burned a little bit to smack my tent and I asked them that if they still feel that they need to hound a people in this past, that I hope that they found a peace because the people who did that to them they didn't know what they're doing and people doing this, people just don't, don't know what they do. They do things without knowing. So that's why it's important to forgive. This is a current reality in my tent. 
It's just freezing cold. I am freezing cold. And by the way, is no way that in this tent fits two people with equipment. No way. I fit here on my own perfectly. Not two people. Not two men's like a man, like a boy. It's half past five. Outside is pouring down and it's windy and it's like five degrees Celsius but it feels like zero. I managed to somehow dry my sleeping bag so I slept nice and warm but I'm not quite sure how I figure out to pack everything. Um, it's supposed to pull down until seven. morning everyone is maybe seven o'clock morning it's very cold it's very cold my jacket is still wet so I'm wrapped here in my sleeping bag and it stops raining but it's no sunrise I mean there is a sunrise but I don't see it it's very cloudy and I have a little bit sore throat <laughs> from yesterday how I get soaky uh, I think I think I'm just gonna packed everything and tried to move myself to Castleton because it's very cold. I I'm currently waiting until it stops a little bit rain. It's supposed to be sunny at a 10 o'clock for like one hour uh, although now it looks like sunny and warm and there was a rainbow it's still raining and very heavy rain so I'm trying to be patient and I'm um, prepare myself here with the backpack and everything just to get out pack the tent like I will just literally roll it in and we'll go down to the village I managed to save some warm clothes uh, for later in a train, so hopefully everything will be fine. I just need to be a little bit patient and trustful that this wind and the rain stops. Yoy. Currently walking um, down Vinat's Pass. I decided to walk back from where I came from <laughs> and walk it also through the down like I did from up, only because the views are uh, just incredible. And uh, the weather shows up so nice as well. I'm so glad that I patiently wait uh, in my tent because. Uh, after the rainbow, there comes another heavy storm of storm, heavy rain. What I learned on this trip is the patience. Patience, it was experience, but I'm glad that I made it. Aye, aye. So, day three, I'm currently at a Speedwell Cavern, uh, going to visit uh, one of the longest uh, shafts in Great Britain, it's 143 meters long and it's 800 meters under the Speedwell, the hill probably, I don't know, <laughs> and uh, all visit is on the boat, so yeah, I paid the ticket 16 pound and I can't wait, my boat is coming 11.40. Okay, so you're probably wondering then, 
What are we doing down here in this dark, dingy cave on a boat with a tour guide who doesn't even look old enough to be qualified to work here? Well, we're all going to skip straight past that question. Let me introduce you to Speedwell Cabin. What we're travelling through right now is an old 18th century lead mine. Now this lead mine opened in 1771 and closed in 1791 after just 20 years of operation. Now the reason that it was only open for 20 years is because this mine was a huge financial failure. What we're going to come up to in a few moments time is the first vein of lead that the mine has found down here. It's called the Little Winster Vein. Little because it's quite physically small, it's only about 68 centimetres wide and one metre high. And Winster, because that is the name of the seven year old boy that would have worked down in this vein of lead for 13 hours a day, seven days a week, with just two hours off on a Sunday so that he could go to church. And as we go past it, I'd like you to imagine yourself as a young seven year old working down in this vein of lead goes about a further seven or eight metres backwards than what you can see. And at the end of the day, it gets so tight back there, Winston would have actually had to crawl out backwards. Here it is now, just on the left, so if you look over to your left-hand side now. So that's a little Winston bean, where Winston would have worked 13 hours. Now, unfortunately, though, for Winston, Teller was corrosive, and he would have had this candle in his mouth all day, like I said. Corroded his mouth, his teeth, and eventually his stomach lining. And because of this, Winston did not make it past his 14th birthday. In fact, according to the minekeeper's book, he died just two days before it. So a nice positive start to the tour. What that actually is, is the second vein of lead that the miners found down here. It's called the Longcliffe vein, and it was the most profitable vein of lead that they found. They actually got about £3,000 worth of lead just from that one single vein. That is because behind all of their bricks, there is lots of loose and unstable old mine workings, which include lots of this loose rock shale, which could tumble down here into the canal at any time, filling it up. And it, the miners would have bricked that up immediately after they'd finished mining as well, because it would have been constantly tumbling down into here, all of that loose rock and unstable workings. And also, then veins extend all the way up to the surface, um, right up onto the top of Longcliffe Hill, from where the vein gets its name. So as you can imagine, when it rains up on the hill, water would wash down here into the canal. It washed down all of that loose rock, dirt, grass, sand, whatever. Rubbish. There's even one supposedly a sheep that managed to find its way all the way from the surface of the hill down here into the canal. Now what I'm going to come on to now is actually a little bit more about the halfway house. So can everybody see above us and to the side these kind of grooves in the roof? Yeah. Now what these holes or grooves are is where the miners would have placed a stick of something called black powder. Now what black powder is, it's a cheap alternative to gunpowder and it's what these miners would have used to blast their way through the rock down here. So one miner would have drilled about 20 to 25 holes in the rock, each hole sort of taking around three hours to drill. Another miner would have hammered in the sticks of black powder using a six kilo sledgehammer. The final miner would have lit the fuse and then all of them would have run as fast as they could all the way back to Halfway House to take shelter. And that was Halfway House as of a use, to be used as a shelter point, to keep these miners from the blasts of rock that would have been flying down here. But as you can probably figure out, the further these miners got up the canal or further they mined, the further the distance to Halfway House.
essentially there was a young couple from Scotland. Um, parents wouldn't let them get married. So this couple did was basically travel to a, a village called Peak Forest, which is kind of near here, near Castleton. And that's because they could get married there legally without the parents' permission. Uh -huh. um, but before doing that, they stole all of the parents' money, jewellery, um, everything like that. Um, they went off on this trip. And when they actually were going to Peak Forest, they stopped off in the halfway house in, in Castleton for the night. When they're in there, and there were some miners and saw this couple with all their jewellery, money, eating well. Uh, they got quite jealous. Basically, what these miners decided to do was rob and ambush this couple uh. one night. So the couple set off on their horse. But when it's past one night, the miners jumped out from around the corner, ambushed them. This couple screamed and shouted and yelled and wailed. The miners basically realised they had no choice but to murder the couple. Then, not knowing what to do with them, they basically dragged their bodies to Speedwell, dragged them down the mine shaft, and then dragged them to the halfway house where they left them. Um, these miners went to work the next day, they went straight to the halfway house, the bodies had gone. Um, somehow, nobody knows where. And then all of the miners that were basically involved in the murder all met their deaths in very weird circumstances. So I know one killed himself. I think one fell off a cliff and I think the other one had a boulder fall on his head all in the winter's pass and a lot of people say that that was the ghost of the couple basically coming back to punish them for what they did oh. um, a lot of people say it's haunted because of the bodies of the couple down there um, and also it's their miners have died it's very big. Castletown heading off on the bus, which is supposed to be already here to Sheffield, and from there on a train on. Hello, my beautiful followers. I'm on my way home. I catch on early train. I a little bit cheated because my train tickets completely soaked from the rain. Uh, you couldn't actually see the reservation tickets, so because it was not possible to read it, they let me stay in because they couldn't figure out as well. So I arrived to Eastbourne three hours earlier than I supposed because I was very tired. I still have like maybe two caverns to see but they've been very far from each other. So I give up because I was really tired and I have a pain in my arms and in my legs and soaky wet feet. So I rather decided to just go home. Maybe another time I will see a different cover. I got myself a vegan burger because I was not able to cook. This is my food. What I learned on this trip is mostly patience that sometimes it's better to wait until the rain stops because if I waited in a John's Blue Cavern I could set up a tent in the dry conditions but uh, about this is also my trips that I'm learning every time something new so in all the wild campings what I did so far I haven't got any rain, luckily. So this was the first time that I had to set up the tent in such a horrible conditions. I cannot see that because I was not recording because it was so windy and the rain was so heavy that I haven't got a time to put my waterproof protection on my phone. So I didn't record nothing, but it was hilarious. And at the same time, like, so difficult. I never ever set up tent in such a heavy rain like I had on uh, Vitas Pass, Vintas Pass, Vinatas, Vin, Vinna, Vinatas Pass. Mostly, but I'm of proud of myself. 
that I didn't give up, it was worth for it. And actually, first time ever, I made the whole route what I plotted previously on my map. I thought that this is gonna be my last trip of the season because I am not considered about me handling very hard cold conditions in the mountains, but I decided that I will do one more and that's gonna be at the lake district. I didn't choose yet. I didn't choose yet any location. Hopefully in November I will see you from a lake district. Bye!